our presentation on the cholinergic receptors. So this presentation will focus on one of the cholinergic receptors, which is the nicotinic receptor. the lecture, students would be able to have an understanding of the cholinergic receptors, particularly nicotinic receptors, their properties, and their functions. Cholinergic receptors are also known as acetylcholine receptors, and we have two broad classes. These are the nicotinic and the muscarinic receptors. Their classification is based on two chemical agents that mimic the effects of acetylcholine these are the nicotine and muscarine. Of course, nicotine is derived from the tobacco plant, while muscarine is derived from the uh, uh, species of mushroom. So nicotine, just like acetylcholine, is a nicotinic receptor agonist. In the sympathetic ganglia and the skeletal muscle, nicotine will mimic the stimulatory actions of acetylcholine, and these actions are called nicotinic actions and the receptor involved are the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. Uh, muscarine is responsible for the toxicity of the toadstool. Muscarine will mimic the stimulatory action of acetylcholine on the smooth muscle and the glands. These actions of acetylcholine are called muscarinic actions and the receptors involved are muscarinic cholinergic receptors. Uh, the other name of nicotinic receptors are nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And they are members of a superfamily of lichen gated ion channels or ionotropic receptors. They are called as ion gated channels because they facilitate the entry and the exit of ions in and out of the cell. So when we say ions, so these are atoms or molecules that carry an electrical charge. And examples of this are the calcium ions, the potassium ions the chloride, and the calcium. So, when these receptors are activated, the sodium channels are open, leading to depolarization of the membrane. This depolarization may lead to contraction by excitation-contraction coupling. And this is, of course, important in the skeletal muscle. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are present mainly at four locations. So the, these receptors are present in the CNS. We also have the presence of these receptors in the adrenal medulla. So recall that the adrenal medulla is sympathetically innervated and the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine at the neuroeffector junction to activate the nicotinic receptors that are present in the chromatin cells of the adrenal medulla. We also have the autonomic ganglia. So when we say autonomic ganglia, it refers to the ganglia you know, between the uh, pre and the post uh, ganglionic neuron. And uh, in here, you know, it releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine for both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. For the neuromuscular junction, of course, this is a part of the somatic uh, nervous system. And at the a neuromuscular junction, it releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to bind to nicotinic receptors in the skeletal muscles. This diagram shows the role of nicotinic receptors in the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. So starting with the somatic nervous system, we have here the presence of nicotinic receptors in the skeletal muscle. So acetylcholine will be released in the motor neuron and it will bind to the nicotinic receptors that are present in the skeletal muscle. In the case of the sympathetic nervous system, um, the nicotinic receptors are present at the ganglia of the postganglionic neuron. And uh, when the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine, it will bind to the nicotinic receptors to promote the uh, adrenergic neurotransmission. We also have the presence of the parasympathetic, uh, the nicotinic receptors in the postganglionic neuron of the parasympathetic nervous system. So we have here the presence of these uh, nicotinic receptors, and when the acetylcholine will bind to these receptors, it will promote the cholinergic neurotransmission. Norepinephrine, uh, nicotinic receptors are also present in the adrenal medulla 
particularly at the chromaffin cells, so that when acetylcholine will bind to it, it will promote the uh, release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. There are three types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. These are the neuronal, ganglionic, and the muscular. The neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are present within the CNS and the adrenal medulla and were responsible for the CNS stimulation and the release of catecholamines respectively. So for example, when acetylcholine will bind to the nicotinic receptors, neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors present in the chromophene cells of the adrenal medulla, it will promote the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine. Within the CNS, they play an important role as excitatory receptors responsible for CNS stimulation, decreased fatigue, and increased in alertness. Of the structure of the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, it is made up of five proteins, each of which traverses the cell membrane. Together, the five subunits form a complex around a central pore or channel. When the channel is open, the ions can flow into or out of the cell. So this is a diagram showing the, uh, the structure of the, the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So again, they are present in the uh, cell membrane. They are considered to be ionotropic receptors. And uh, for the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, there are five proteins. So we have here one, two, three, four, five. In this case, we have here uh, five alpha-7 subunits to form the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So, we have five alpha subunits. So, this is a cross-section showing the five um, alpha-7 subunits that form together to form a channel or a pore. And this will allow, for example, the movement of calcium ions into or out of the cell. We also have another subtype of this uh, neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. The only difference is that in this uh, subtype, there are two, uh, two alpha-4 subunit and there are three beta-2 subunit. And this will allow you know, the movement of sodium and calcium ions into and out of the neuron. This diagram represents the locations of the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So this is the presynaptic membrane and this is the postsynaptic membrane. So within the presynaptic membrane or the uh, presynaptic uh, neuron, you have there the presence of the synaptic vesicles. When the synaptic vesicle will release acetylcholine in the synaptic cap, what will happen is the acetylcholine will bind to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that are present in the presynaptic and the postsynaptic membrane. So the, the receptors here are represented by these blue structures here. So they are present you know, in the uh, pre and the postsynaptic membrane. And the red dots here are represented by the acetylcholine. So when the acetylcholine will be released, it will bind to the for example, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. It can also bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the presynaptic membrane to promote the negative feedback. Negative feedback or the inhibition of the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic membrane. We also have the ganglionic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. They are present at the autonomic ganglia and responsible for ganglionic transmission. So, for example, when they are present in the sympathetic ganglia, it will be responsible for, for example, the adrenergic neurotransmission. When they are present in the, uh, the autonomic ganglia of the parasympathetic, of course, it will be responsible for the cholinergic neurotransmission. Hence, the role is to conduct ganglionic transmission to fill the gap between the pre and the post ganglionic fibers. The next is the muscular nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So they are present on all skeletal muscles and produce muscle contraction. It is important not to be confused with the skeletal muscle 
with the smooth muscle in terms of the presence of the cholinergic receptors. For the skeletal muscle, the cholinergic receptors that are present here are the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So for example, when the somatic motor neuron releases acetylcholine, it will bind to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in the skeletal muscle. In the case of the smooth muscle, the acetylcholine will bind to the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors when it will be released in the neuroeffector junction. At muscular nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, there are a class of drugs called neuromuscular blockers that will act on these receptors and inhibit their action to produce muscle relaxation. Again, the, the main uh, effect of the activation of this receptor is to produce muscle contraction. When this will be inhibited by the neuromuscular blockers, what will happen is this, uh, this will produce muscle relaxation. Muscular nicotinic receptors are also known as NMJ, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Uh, they are also called as this one because, again, they are found in the neuromuscular junction. In terms of their structure, they consist of five polypeptide subunits. There are two alpha subunit and one of the beta, gamma, and delta subunit. The binding surface of the receptor appears to be on the alpha subunit. The subunits contain recognition sites for the agonist, reversible antagonist, and alpha toxin. So, example of the uh, alpha toxin is the cobra toxin and the alpha bungaro toxins. This diagram represents the three-dimensional model of the NMJ or the muscular nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Again, these receptors are ligand-gated ion channels. So this uh, type of receptor is composed of five subunits. We have here two alpha subunit and one gamma, one beta, and one delta. They all contribute to the formation of the pore. So this uh, structure here at the center represents the structure of the receptor when there is no ligand that is attached. So when there is no ligand attached or when there is no acetylcholine bound, the channel is closed. When the when two acet, uh, acetylcholine molecules will bind to the alpha subunit of the receptor, what will happen is it will open, promoting the influx of sodium ions and the efflux of the potassium ions. So this will, of course, now cause the depolarization and ultimately you know, the muscle contraction. This diagram represents the subunit arrangement and molecular structure of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. This is the longitudinal view and these are the polypeptides that comprise the channel. So this is again a ligand-gated ion channel meaning that when it will be activated, it will open to promote the entry and the exit of ions. This is another representation of the muscular and the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. For the muscular, uh, it is uh, considered to be heteromeric type of receptor because it is composed of different polypeptide subunits. We have the delta, beta 1, and alpha 1, as well as the gamma. So in this case, we have five proteins and um, they, are, they will combine together to form a pore. And again, now we have here in the structure of the muscular nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, there are two alpha-1 subunit, 1 gamma, 1 delta, and 1 beta-1. In terms of their site of activation, we have here the alpha-1 as a site of activation. Uh, for example, when the acetylcholine will bind to the alpha-1 uh, subunit, what will happen is it will promote the nicotinic effect of acetylcholine on the muscle, which is contraction. For the neuronal uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, we have two types. One is homo-oligomeric, meaning that it is only composed of one type of polypeptide subunit, and that is the alpha-7 alpha seven subunit. So all of this are the site of 
the activation of the this type of uh, receptor. So meaning that when, for example, acetate quinine will bind to this receptor, what will happen is it will promote the nicotinic effect at this particular site. Also, have another type of neuronal nicotinic acetate quinine receptor in that is heteromeric, meaning that it is composed of two types of polypeptide subunits. So there are three uh, beta-2 subunit and two alpha-4 subunit. When this acetylcholine, for example, will bind to these sites, it will activate the receptor to promote the nicotinic effects at this type, at this uh, neurons. This diagram is a summary of the different nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And again, we have three types, the NN or the neuronal, the NG or the ganglionic, and the NM or the muscular type. For the neuronal, of course, these are found in the CNS and the adrenal medulla. It will promote CNS excitation and the release of adrenaline and norepinephrine. So these are the nicotinic effects of the neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. In terms of the ganglionic, it is present in the autonomic ganglia for both sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Its action or its effects would be ganglionic transmission. So this is... Uh, for example, in the case of the sympathetic, we have the adrenergic neurotransmission. In the case of the parasympathetic, we have the cholinergic neurotransmission. For the muscular nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, of course, this is present in the skeletal muscle. And when, for example, acetylcholine will bind to the nicotinic receptor, it will promote skeletal muscle contraction. So all nicotinic receptors are ionotropic and fast up.